We have time for just a, a few questions, so I will begin. I'll take the moderator's prerogative, and I'll start with uh, Douglas. Uh, reading up about Chile and energy policy, and of course you presented the data on how energy prices have gone up so dramatically in recent years. When the Chilean government uh, imposed carbon dioxide taxes, when the Chilean government announced that they were switching the Santiago Metro from conventional power to wind and solar power, uh, Chileans were promised that this would save money, this would reduce prices. And you've shown so clearly that just the opposite has happened. So my question is, have government officials addressed this? Have they acknowledged that they were wrong? Do they pretend, do they invent some new math to show that they actually have reduced prices? Do they ignore the issue? What's the scene in Chile? No, no, no. Thanks, James. <clears throat> First of all, politicians in Chile, when they are asked why uh, electricity prices are rising, they say, just wait a few years because a new contracts of renewables will uh, reduce prices. And that's a straight lie. It would be all the country, as uh, this has been happening until now. Uh, the exact year when uh, the carbon tax was applied, I don't remember exactly, but was a, it, it has been uh, active for several years by now, and it's, it's in a rate of $5 per ton of CO2 emissions. Right. and and. and I feel for the people of Chile because here in the United States, I, I've often uh, spoken, testified at legislative hearings and uh, in the state of Iowa recently, for example, where their electricity prices have gone up significantly after wind power was introduced. They were promised wind power would reduce costs just like they were promised uh, the people in Chile. And now here we are 10, 15 years later, prices are still going up. And they say, well, sooner or later they'll go up. We just need more money to build more wind turbines. And we're going to have to, and, and they impose new rate hikes claiming that's going to save people money. But uh, hopefully in, in Chile, uh, the politicians will be held accountable and that uh, all that destruction that's going on, as horrible as it is, hopefully it will change things for the better when they consider uh, the impacts of their policies. Uh, Wolfgang, uh, in Europe, it seems that there is a, like in Chile, people are rising up against uh, rising energy prices tied to these climate policies. Uh, the governments in Poland, in Hungary, in Austria, uh, are very skeptical of the UN position. We had the yellow vest uh, protests in France. Uh, recently we had elections in the Netherlands in which a climate skeptic party did very well. I know I'm getting a little outside of Europe, but in Iran just this past weekend there were riots caused by rising gasoline prices. And my question is, in Europe, where we see people protesting these higher energy prices tied to climate policies, is there traction on the scientific front are people making the connection between these climate policies and the rising costs that are driving people into poverty? That's tricky, uh, really, to, to know uh, for all of Europe. But one thing we see um, since last year, since actually the, since Greta, and actually coincides with the Yellow West, our, the traffic on our website, I mean, went up in a significant manner. The videos, I mean, our uh, conference videos, talking head videos about science, and we got by four times the views now since last year. So it's more than 2.7 million people watched it. So it's just that there is an interest. But on the political side, hardly any party really wants to touch that issue. And um, I find it impressive when, when you last year were in, in, in Poland, where you, where you had a joint um, de declaration by, with uh, Solidarność, the trade union, where they basically rejected this... Um, yeah, basically all Paris Agreement thing. The point is, uh, energy poverty exists in Europe. In Germany alone, there are more than 400,000 400, households who are uh, cut off power. They're really cut it off entirely, so you get 0%. Not in Italy, where you get a little bit, at least for the fridge and so on. And um, so we see an increasing number of energy poverty, and it becomes more and more a topic even in, in mainstream media. And, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's tricky to say because... Um, the left, you know, hijacked the topic, you know, on the side, and hardly any party uh, wants to touch it. And one thing, what was interesting actually, when uh, people from the from Angela Merkel's party, I can't call it a conservative party anymore. So, when they actually in private tell us, sure, sure, 
we know we know that the energy transition is is utterly a failure. But um, if we say this is a is a wrong is 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 a position other party already occupied. And and I heard you mention before, and I thought I had misheard you uh, a, a few days ago when you mentioned 2.7 million people have watched uh, videos of your climate conference last week in Munich, the one that the climate activists attempted to shut down through violence and threats and intimidation. Congratulations on you, 2.7 million people. That's fantastic. Very good. Very good. Very good. And I think that alone answers my question, that uh, we're gaining traction through, through your excellent efforts. So wonderful. Uh, Lord Moncton, I, I've uh, heard a couple questions online. Uh, seeing as you delved into the science, let me bring up a scientific point that uh, we haven't addressed yet. Uh, sea level rise. Uh, it's often asserted that uh, because of climate change, uh, the seas will inundate places like Miami Beach, Florida, uh, the east coast of the United States, and of course all sorts of cities around the world that happen to be built along uh, coastal shorelines. Uh, what, what is the threat from human-caused climate change regarding sea level rise? Right. The expert on this is Professor Nils Axel Myrna from Sweden. His best estimate is really terrifying for those who believe that sea level rise is a problem because he forecasts that um, the most likely rate of sea level rise over the whole of the 20th century is that by 2100 we will see somewhere between 2 and 10 inches of sea level rise. And I'm talking of inches. That is a very small number of centimetres. It's about 25 centimetres at worst. Uh, but his best estimate is around 10 to 15 centimetres. Now, the actual rate at which sea level appears to be rising everywhere, once one has allowed for what is called the isostatic correction, because you've got some parts of the seabed are falling and others are rising as the Earth's rocks move around uh, tectonically, um, it comes out at roughly 1.1 millimetres per year of sea level rise, which is very, very small. That's 11 centimetres per century, uh, which is about four inches a century. It's really not a lot. So here is an offer I should like to make to everyone who has a beachfront lavish property that is now worthless because they believe <laughs> that sea level rise is going to engulf it. I will guarantee to buy that property for one dollar, because after <laughs> all, it's not worth anything to you. And so come on, roll up, roll up, if you really believe that sea level rise is a problem. And I said this to a guy called Robert uh, Kiyosaki in um, Canada a couple of years ago because he has a beachfront property in Hawaii, which sounded just ideal for my holiday uh, destination. <laughs> and he said he was really worried about how the, he could see the sea level rising and it was going to encroach upon his property. I said, fine, I'll buy it off you for a dollar. <laughs> and he somehow felt it expedient to turn me down. So no, sea level rise, is like everything else in this field, has been egregiously hyped. But there are relatively elementary mathematical calculations you can do to do with the amount by which water can expand, given the extra temperature that is, is coming down on the top of it. It's just not going to be very big at all. So that's the mother of all scares. But as you can see, four inches over a century, not much of a scare, really. And, and I suspect that if you were to offer them, if you were to go much more than that, offer 70 80 percent on current value, that they would all turn you down as well which tells you what they think about their asserted climate uh, scare regarding sea level rise. And of course, Al Gore with his uh, coastal mansion, uh, Barack Obama just recently bought himself one. I believe it was on Nantucket Island, apparently not so concerned about it's sea level rise. It's 14 feet above sea level. 14 one? feet. Yeah. There we go. So according to them, it'll be gone in a you know, few decades. All right, but they're buying property nonetheless. Finally, Tom Harris, uh, your presentation concluding with the environmental consequences of uh, wind and solar power, and particularly uh, what wind turbines do to birds and bats, and, and the manner in which uh, bats are killed, uh, is heartbreaking to me. And also, I've seen uh, where the, the studies and the documentation of how birds are torched to death in the Mojave Desert uh, through, the, through the solar uh, facilities. And my question is, 
with your group, the International Climate Science Coalition, I know that the group is focused mainly on the scientific, the hard scientific questions, but are you working either through ICSC or otherwise with environmental groups, with uh, sincere environmental groups that would like to preserve these species, that would like to preserve land from being developed? Are you working in those, uh, with those groups to advance this message? Well, we'd like to, but they don't seem receptive, generally speaking. However, there are individuals just uh, to the west of Ottawa, for example. There's a bird sanctuary for eagles and large birds of prey, and they've been actually teaching me a fair bit about the damage that wind turbines do to them, and they are vehemently opposed to wind turbines. They consider them bird blenders. They really hate them. So we're working with individuals that perhaps are uh, more brave than the organizations themselves. And, you know, I, I heard years ago that some environmental groups have a hard time with the wind turbine issue because the conservationists within the group don't like wind turbines, but the global warmers love them. So, I mean, I think that generally speaking, environmentalists that are sincere should be kicking the global warming people off the stage. I mean, they are diverting funds to a nonsense issue. They are lessening the credibility of environmental groups. And of course, they're encouraging things that are hurting the causes they say they hold dear, such as protection of nature. The whale issue, that's a big one too for wind turbines. So yeah, I encourage more and more environmental groups and others when I have a chance to, to join us because we're on their side when it comes to real environmental protection. May I add something? Very quickly. I wrote to the Royal Society for the Prevention of Birds about this some years ago and said surely they would join me in opposing any more onshore wind farms in particular because of the death of birds. And they said, no, it didn't matter how many birds were killed, global warming was the real problem, and therefore they were going to advocate the increase in turbines. That had well, well let's hope that, uh, that the information, Tom, that you presented will change some minds and that true environmentalists will, will get on board because I think all of us in this room and watching uh, live around the world care very deeply about the species on this planet. We are going to take a five-minute break, and then we are going to have a conversation with Dr. Will Happer. So please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you very much, panelists. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and consider donating to the Heartland Institute to support more vibrant free markets, greater individual liberties, and more videos like this one.